to worship once again as we come together across the miles on this third Sunday in June. I'd like to welcome all of you who are joining us through YouTube and our website, um, those who are members of our community and those who are just checking in to see what happens at Windsor Park United Church. We welcome you to worship this day as we come together bringing our prayers, our thoughts, our hopes, our fears in the midst of all that is happening in our world. We welcome you to come to this place, to come together to pray and offer words and song as we worship God. Let us worship God this day. As we gather together and worship this day, we do so, always remembering that we are also gathering in God's presence. God's presence, who is with us in the midst of the storms of life. This candle reminds us of the sheltering love of God, keeping us, lifting us up throughout all the trials and tribulations of life. In the midst of life's storm, God is there. What have we to fear? In the darkness, God is with us. Of whom shall we be afraid? Rise up, people of God, for you, for you are loved and saved. Thanks be to God who cares deeply for us. Let us raise our voices in praise to God. Let us worship God this day. We invite you to join us as we sing our opening hymn, Come and Find the Quiet Center. Caring God, who nudges us away from fear and toward faith, 
ever-present God, who fills us with awe, but also raises many questions without easy, easy answers. Open our eyes to see you in our boat today. Strengthen our hearts for the challenges that lie ahead. Open our ears during this time to hear the word you speak. Yet we know, merciful God, that when we find that our lives are lashed by life's windstorms, we often lash out in return. When we feel lost in the midst of life's storms, we forget that there are others who also struggle. Many times, we think that we are the only ones. Forgive us when we blame you or others for our troubles. Teach us to find you in the eye of the storm. Show us the calm center that comes from a word of peace. Help us to remember that you are with us. Amen. Hear the witness of the scripture. God listens. God helps. Now is the day of salvation. Open wide your hearts and receive God's forgiveness. As we have been forgiven, let us bring this same forgiveness to those around us. And as we have been blessed, let us be a blessing. Amen. So welcome to our Time for All Ages. Today we're out in our garden, our memorial garden. And you see behind me, the clouds are coming in, the gray clouds, and, and it reminds me of storm clouds. And I'm going to tell you a couple of stories of storms that I've experienced in my life. I remember one time we were at uh, this these cabins about 45 minutes on the other side of Kenora in northwestern Ontario and and we're sitting on the beach and and it was much like today there was some blue sky and some clouds and then in the distance you see these clouds come in these gray dark gray clouds come in and we're sitting on the beach and we're watching and as we watch you could see this this curtain of water come across the lake towards us as we're sitting on the beach and it was really fascinating to see that because you could see where the storm began and where this like as it came across and then all of a sudden we weren't on the beach anymore because it was pouring rain it was so cool to see that storm come I remember when I was younger we we went on a trip and we were down in in Simcoe Ontario which is in southwestern Ontario and it's very hot and humid down there in the summer and so they get a lot of thunderstorms and they had this little dog and like many other pets that I know of this dog was terrified of thunderstorms and so as soon as it started flashing the lightning and the booming of the thunder the dog would run down in the basement and hide under the desk in the office and I remember going down there and laying with the dog under the desk and the dog was shaking and trying to comfort the dog because that was a really, really scary experience for that puppy. But it's not only for puppies, it's not only for animals. I know people, I have a good friend in, in Halifax who whenever she finds out that there's a thunderstorm, and especially if there's a severe thunderstorm watch, she starts posting on Facebook about how her anxiety starts to rise, how she's getting more and more scared. But you know what? She has a whole group of friends who reach out to her at that time and help her through that. And so much like I went down and, and laid with the dog under the desk, my friend has all kinds of people that, that journey with her through the storm that happened in, in Halifax. And so she's very lucky that way. And it got me thinking about you know storms in our lives, like those times in our lives when things are going really, really badly, when we're struggling, whether it be struggling with friends or, or struggling at school or struggling in relationships who goes with us and journeys with us through that most of us will have very good friends or families that will journey with us through those times of, of, of storms in our lives but we also have to remember that God is with us in the midst of all of that that God journeys with us in the storms of our lives now I'll be honest I am one of those people that actually really, really likes the storms. I like to sit in the dark and watch the lightning flash and, and hear the thunder boom and roll, but that's just me. But I know that there are many of us who, in the midst of our storms of our lives, are just really, really, really glad that we have those people who comfort us and journey with us and are there with us. 
And so always remember that no matter what life is throwing at you, you're not alone, that you have people with you and that God is always with you. And so we'll see you again next time on our Time for All Ages. We invite you to join your voices with ours once again as we sing, We Do Not Know What Lies Ahead.
This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. Our second reading this morning is from Mark 4, verse 35 to 41. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with him in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. out on the water in the midst of the storm. 
who seem to have no idea what to do, and they're frightened. But I wonder if that might just be one of the major points of this story. Yes, the disciples were frightened by the storm, they're concerned for their own safety, and so they wake up the one whom they've been following. They wake up Jesus. And when they wake him up, he immediately calms the storm. And you would think that that would bring great relief to those in the boat. But does it? Now, our translation from the New Revised Standard Version this morning says that after this happens, after the storm is calm, the disciples were filled with great awe. But there are many who question this or that particular translation of the Greek. Some people translate the Greek word used for fear to mean, to mean fear. And now as David Lowe's senior pastor of Mount Olivet Lutheran Church in Minneapolis says, Sometimes this fear is described as a reverential awe. But it's important to distinguish that kind of emotion from a more base terror of some known or some unknown threat. Yet I'm guessing the reactions of the disciples was somewhere in between these two poles. So in some ways, the disciples are full of fear for their lives at the beginning of the story, and then at the end they're also in a sort of place of fear, but a different kind of fear. We know in Mark that this is not the first time that Jesus has done something that might be considered or seen as miraculous. No, he has helped the lepers, he has driven out demons, and so why with this miracle? Why now? Maybe because it is one thing for the disciples to follow a charismatic leader who is a great healer, but it might just be a very different thing to realize that you are truly following the living God who can calm nature with a word, calm the natural world with a word. Because when you follow the living God, that might just mean that things are about to change, that maybe there might be more to this than they had previously thought. In Leif Edgar's book, Edgar's book, Peace Like a River, Reuben Land, the narrator of the story, tells of the apparent miracle by which his father saved his life when he had just been born. And then he reflects on how often we tend to domesticate miracles using the words to describe all manner of things that merit our attention and appreciation, but are not finely or truly miraculous. And then in the book he goes on to press that distinction. Real miracles, he says, bother people. Like strange, sudden pains unknown in medical literature, it's true. They rebut every rule all good citizens take comfort in. Lazarus obeying orders and climbing up out of the grave, now there's a miracle. And you can just bet that it upset a lot of folks who were standing around at the time. So then Reuben says to his sister, I quote, People fear miracles because they fear being changed. And this might just be the basis of the fear that was felt by the disciples once the sea was calm. It was a realization and the fear that things were changing. This is not just about a journey across the sea, but rather it was a journey away from familiar territory into the unknown. It might just have been the realization that the change that they were facing was real. It was challenging. It was difficult. And they are being called to this change by the one who calmed the sea with a word, the living God. It is fear 
that is based in the uncertainty and the leaving behind of their old selves to become something, someone new. It is a fear that is based in leaving behind the world that they knew so that they might usher in a new world. A world where all are equal, all are valued, all are loved, all are worthy. There is more to this last quote from Rubin in the book, and the full quote is this. People fear miracles because they fear being changed, he said, and then continues, though ignoring them will change you also. The disciples were afraid, possibly because they were facing great change, but they didn't face that change alone. Jesus was with them and calling them through that change, leading them through that place into the unknown. They were never alone. We too are living in a time of great challenges. We have been dealing with this pandemic for over a year. We have now come face to face with the racism and hatred in this country, and it continues. We are in the midst of the storms of life. But is God calling us to come to the other side of the sea? In the midst of this storm, or these storms, is God calling us to change, to become something or someone new? Is God calling us to something new in our lives this day? See, in the story, there is not just one disciple that is being singled out. Rather, it is all of them who are present. All of them are called to this journey of change and transformation. So what are we being called to in order to change? What journey are we being called to embark on as a community of faith in order to live as the living God has challenged us to live? How might we be challenged to leave our old world behind, our old ways of doing things, and live into a new way that will usher in the kingdom of God? The disciples, in the midst of the storm, might just have been being challenged out of their complacency to a new way. What have we become complacent with in our community that we need to change to find a new way? We are being called to follow the living God out into the world, being bearers of that new kingdom. That is all of us as a community. It is not just one of us or two of us, but all of us. We are challenged to answer God's call to come and be changed. Yes, it might be scary to leave the comfort of what has been, but it is God's call to a new life for ourselves, for our community and for our world. Will you answer God's call and sail across that sea with Jesus? I am going. Will you come with me? Amen.
invite you to join us as we enter into a time of prayer. Once again, it will be a responsive prayer. When you hear me say, rise up, O oh God, I invite you all to respond with and hear our prayer. Let us center ourselves as we become God's people in prayer. Be gracious, O God, and look upon your church throughout the world, guiding its search for the unity for which Jesus prayed. Rise up, O God, and hear our prayer. Be gracious, O God, and look upon the distress of those who are persecuted for their faith, those whose path ahead seems dim, those who are victims of oppressive relationships. Rise up, O God, and hear our prayer. Be gracious, O God, look upon the needy, that they may know the warmth of your faithfulness, that their hope may not be snuffed out like a fitful candle, candle flame. Rise up, O God, and hear our prayer. Be gracious, O God, and look upon those whom we name today, as we pray for Marlene, Susan, Rob, Ken, Lindsay, Reese, Hayden, August, Janice, Kim, Brian, Diana, Olga, Ginny, Hermia, Liam, Bev, Pat, and Ollie. And those who are named in our hearts, that in the darkness of their circumstances they feel, may feel the gentle light of your presence. Rise up, O God, and hear our prayer. Gracious God, let your glory appear among us and make us sharers of your eternity with all your people as we continue to pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to join us once again as we sing our closing hymn, Will Your Anchor Hold? <laughs>
As we move forward from this time together to face the storms of life, go with the love of God in your hearts, with the peace of Christ in your soul, and in the presence of the Holy Spirit. For you go with God, the God who will not abandon you today, tomorrow, or ever. Thanks be to God. Amen.